This episode of The Bill and Callie Show is brought to you by... Brown Insurance Group has been providing coverage to municipalities, companies, and individuals in the region for over 73 years. As a partner of the Keystone Insurers Group, we are able to offer an extensive line of insurance products and services, from commercial services, including employee benefits and liability insurance, to personal services, such as home, auto, watercraft, and motorcycle coverage. We are also committed to our community. We support many charities and events in the region. Our core values of care and integrity since the inception of Brown Insurance Group has made us one of Indiana's most respected and valued insurance agencies. To make an appointment with one of our experienced specialists, call our Highland Insurance Office at 219-972-6060. Brown Insurance Group, small town values, big time resources, going beyond expectations to protect you and yours. The Bill & Kelly Show is recorded at Studio A at Executive Suite Squared in beautiful Hammond, Indiana. Now, here's Bill & Kelly. Hello and welcome to The Bill & Kelly Show. Today we have a very special guest. And uh, it is Mimi Gibson, who comes to us all the way from California, yes, right? Yes, all the way from Hollywood. So, yeah, Hollywood, Hollywood. <laughs> uh, so, excuse our introduction, but that's the way we are. Uh, so, welcome to our show. And at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Kelly, since she knows all this acting type stuff. And, you know, I just watch football and that's it. <laughs> Well, I know I personally am extremely excited to have you on the show. I have been a fan of your work for a long time, and I was lucky enough to work a little bit with Paul Peterson at the Great Lakes Nostalgia Convention when we were doing some old-time radio, and I learned a lot more about a minor consideration, and unfortunately, he hasn't been able to get on our show, but I know that you are also very involved in this wonderful nonprofit tax deductible foundation which is dedicated to protecting the legal and human rights of juvenile performers in the entertainment industry and so i was hoping that we could talk about that to start with and talk a little bit about you but then also get a little bit into your career later on so welcome very much to our show and please tell the audience, if they don't know who you are, which I can't imagine, but if they don't, tell them a little bit about who you are and how you got started in this industry. Oh, uh, I'm Mimi Gibson. I was a child actor. I worked from the time I was 18 months, um, not in the movie business, but I did uh, calendars. That's how I started out. Um, and you could put me with any animal and I would love it. And most kids are afraid of animals. So I got lots of work. And uh, then an agent saw me coloring and at two and a half, I had my first movie. It was called Corky of Gasoline Alley. So my history is I worked from 18 months to 20 and then it was, uh, a lot of reasons, but they really wanted new faces. And so we just didn't get the work we used to get. And uh, I moved on and I became a realtor for 15 years. And then I had a goat and llama farm in Northern California for many years. Okay, oh my I, we have friends with a llama farm and I am in yeah. love with llamas. So I, I love you even more now. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible, but now I love you more. <laughs> yeah, so, it, yeah. if you uh, took a tour of uh, Kelly's house, you'd find many llamas. Llamas and sloths, they're yeah. my kind of thing. But yeah. <laughs> So tell us about a minor consideration and how you got involved in this. Well, it was interesting. My husband and I had just moved up to Northern California. We lived in Los Gatos up in the mountains in the Redwoods. And uh, I was home and I 
didn't usually watch television during the day. I was usually outside. And, uh, but I came in and I turned TV on and there was Paul talking to uh, some interviewer and saying how he had started a minor consideration. And I was shocked because I, at the time, there had been decades where I just didn't pay any attention to anything having to do with the business, the quote business, and didn't talk to anybody. And um, so I had not realized that Rusty Hamer had committed suicide. And if I did, it just didn't register much. And um, Paul, but it upset Paul horribly. And that's how he started a minor consideration because so many kids had had so many problems and were committing suicide and doing drugs and all kinds of things. So um, he was talking about it. So I called him up and I said, you know, I'm so proud of you, you know, what you're doing. This is just wonderful. He goes, where have you been? <laughs> I said, oh, around living my life. And he said, we're all going back into the union to try to change the Coogan law. Will you come? And I said, absolutely. Now, the Coogan law was set up. I'm going to not take a long time explaining this, but it was set up for contract players, uh, children to have their money saved. It was 10%. And you had to uh, be a contract player. So by the time a lot of us were in the business, there were no more contract players. It was very rare. Kids that had TV series were contract players, but the rest of us were independent contractors. So our money was never saved. And uh, so none of my money was saved. And this was an important thing for me to change the Coogan law. And I uh, said, I'll be down there. Um, whatever you want, I'll do. I said to my husband, is it okay if I go down? And he said, absolutely, you know, do whatever. He was a, a doll. Anyway, so for 10 years, we were on the Young Performers Committee, and it took us about seven years to change the Coogan Law. And we all met, it was like the perfect storm. You know how sometimes just things don't mesh. Well, with this, it was Johnny Whitaker, it was Paul, it was Jimmy Russell, uh, Brandon uh, Cruz, uh, people came and went, but uh, it was Jeannie, Paul, me, and um, Johnny Whitaker. He was, uh, he took all the, the uh, secretarial notes. And um, it, we stayed there for years and we came every month, had a meeting on the Young Performers Committee and then we did a, uh, we went to dinner and then, and there were a lot of other people involved too. There were a lot of ex-kid actors. There was a Liz Graham, she had a kid actor and um, she's an actress also. And uh, Jonathan Brandis, his dad, Greg, and um, uh, Michael Hera, who was a manager so he had a different perspective on things. And uh, we all did it every month and finally kind of petered out after 10 years. But we did it for, I can't believe we did it. I said to somebody, how long have we been doing this? We did it every month. Every month there was a meeting. And Paul is the one with a minor consideration that was the heart and soul of it and um, was always on top of kids' issues. And ask him, and he's still, even though he's unwell right now, but 
he still is on top of kids' issues to this day. He is right. I, I do have a question to interject here because I've got curious as you talk about uh, ten percent being held into an, like an annuity, I assume, or something that would be available that would be guaranteed you in your later years, right? It, a it, it's a, a bank account that's set up by the banks. All the banks in LA are all set up to do them. All right. And not an annuity. It's, uh, but the parents can take the money. I think they have to get permission, but I'm not positive. Um, no, I don't think they can. They can't take it and do that with it. They can do that with other monies that the kids earn. But this money has to stay in the locked account uh, until they turn 18, which is, we all thought that's too young, but that's the age of majority in California. It's California law because most of the uh, contracts are governed by California law because of the huge film industry here. Right. And, and so one other question, just again, to, to help me understand. So uh, as a child actor, when you uh, say the houseboat, when you're on houseboat, the money that you earned, your parents received and they, so they used it at their discretion and at, at your age, you know, why would you need that much money they're caring for you? But the problem is now that you, uh, you, you're up in years and you, you don't have that money, right? I mean, that's the major thing. I didn't have it when I turned 18 either, because there wasn't any. Right. Uh, I, my family. And, uh, and, that, and we changed the Coogan law to 15%. Mm. And, uh, we, uh, day one, dollar one. Now, I understand some of the parents got uh, into it and started chipping away at it. So now it's after the first thousand dollars, then it's 15% uh, is saved. Uh, I, I don't like that, but uh, I think they've already gotten a hold and changed that. Which because a lot of people nowadays always think of all these kids getting residuals and they get all kinds of money for all these things that they're doing. And that didn't used to be the case. And those were very small. And, um, you know, I think it, it expanded after a time, but it, I think when it, the residuals first started, you know, this was the early years of television. Mm -hmm. So people were trying to figure things out. And so it started out, I think, with three releases of, of the show. That was all you got money for. Okay. And went to, I think, seven. And now I still get, you were talking to me about Alfred Hitchcock. SAG called me up and said they've got a check from me <laughs> from that from the Fifth Avenue kid, which is shown every Christmas, and they've uh, got a check for me. I said, "Geez, you know." Uh, I, to the girl that was called me from SAG, I said, "You know, uh, I give you the check and tell you to go get coffee." <laughs> Well, I know Paul oh, one time man. posted a picture of a check that he had gotten for like $2.47. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, that's it. And, and, you know, there's some other issues that uh, minor consideration is addressing uh, as well as like work environments or work environments and health issues and, and mental health issues for kids. Because a lot of them, you know, you're this cute kid and you're getting all kinds of work and then all of a sudden, you're not the cute kid anymore and you're not getting the work and it's kind of mentally upsetting to you <laughs> when those kinds of things happen. So what does minor consideration do to, to look out for the kids in that sense? A, a s different psychiatrists that have that volunteer to. Great. Huh. All right. So that's, and um, I know Paul has taken people into his home and uh, giving them a place to stay for a few weeks 
and uh, you know, his uh, wife is a nurse. Right. And so, uh, you know, uh, he's done it all. He really has. He is working now. Uh, he's not happy about cuties, that new movie oh, that's out. Yes. Yeah, I don't think it, well. I don't think a the, lot of people are. No, no. That's, uh, that's disturbing, actually. Uh, he's that. Yeah. And oh, it never, it, it, it's just shocking how you think you're getting somewhere and you're not. I mean, there's a new group of people that come in that are every bit as lacking of morals as you could find. Mm. And parents are, you know. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes they yeah, look at the yeah. bottom line dollar instead of what's best for their child. Well, yeah, they're what's best for their child. Uh, I, I have a friend who's an entertainment attorney and she was, oh, was that her or somebody else? I don't know. I have a lot of people that friends with that are in different things. Oh no, it was my friend. Yeah, that's uh, a screenwriter. And she, <laughs> they, they had a baby on uh, something that was being filmed in, um, uh, in Canada and the baby's supposed to cry and so she thought gosh how are they going to get the baby to cry because the baby wasn't crying and the mom worked walked up and had a squirt bottle and just squirted the baby in the face and <laughs> my girlfriend said <laughs> she said i wouldn't have written that in if i knew that that was going to happen you know People Yet if that happened to an animal, Peter would be all over it. You yeah, know? I mean, exactly. Like unfair treatment, but oh, brother. Uh, boy, sometimes you wonder. Happen. It, that just, you know, and, and I'm not telling a story out of school, but, uh, you know, one of John Provost's funny stories was that he was in a rowboat with Lassie. And of course, Lassie was always treated like the king and last was male because the females they their coats would get kind of scraggly when they come in heat so the males were always gorgeous and you know always in an air-conditioned car and always and we all, all of us worked with lassie in one way or the other i did I did calendars with Lassie and coloring books with Lassie. So Lassie's been around forever and Lassie was, you know, the king. And he's in the rowboat with Lassie and the rowboat tips over. He's in the water, Lassie's in the water. Who does everybody jump in to save? What? <laughs> oh my word. Oh, Too bad, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We gotta protect the coat at all costs. That's right. Oh, oh my goodness man oh man well that that show that. business I <laughs> so one of the people that's handling a minor consideration you know the the is oh my gosh i can't remember her name oh where is that gone she played nelly on little house in the prairie oh uh um allison Arnberg. Ar Ar yes. And she was on our committee also. Um, uh, on and off. She goes to Paris every year and does stand up about bitch from the prairie. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I saw something about that That's actually. Awesome. Yeah. But, um, she she's doing the, the nuts and bolts of uh, a minor consideration right now with the right. That I don't know. Now, for people who want to get more information, I know you can go on to Facebook and find a minor consideration, and there's a lot of information on there and ways to uh, donate and and find out more about it. A phone number that you can call. And um, so, uh, but if you're having trouble on the set, you have two choices. 
either you say nothing so that you will continue working or you call Screen Actors Guild and you're probably never going to work in the business ever again. Hmm. Sad. Just the way it goes. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. <sighs> but this is a great organization. You do such great work and I am so proud of all of you for caring about the future of these child actors and things. I think it's just brilliant. Well, it, they were, they, they are us, you know? And so those of us that it mattered to, we, we hang in there. Yeah. That's great. Now, can we talk a little bit about you and some of the things that you've done in the past and also talk about a little book you have coming out too. Oh, yeah. Okay. So because I have a different perspective than everybody else, I wrote a book and, and I did write a lot about our work, Screen Actors Guild, and exactly what, what we did, what to do if you're a parent, if you find problems, all of that, because I think that's important. It, the book is called Working Kid, and um, it'll be out next month on Amazon. Um, so it's got my memories of working for approximately 20 years in the business when I was young. Um, and it's also got a lot about when we went back and what we did and, and what we know and what we see. And if you think you're getting away with something, forget it. Even the grips know what you're doing. So, um, so it's, it's got all of that to it. So, uh, that's what I'm doing. Awesome. Now, again, for those people who don't know who Mimi is, and I don't understand how that's possible, but one of my favorite movies that you were a big part of was Houseboat with the fabulous Cary Grant and Sophia Loren. And of course, Paul Peterson played your older brother. And let me try and remember, it was Charles Herbert who played your younger brother in that, right? So tell us a little bit about what it was like working with some of those people and some of the other people like Joanne Woodward and things that you worked with. Okay, um, well, I have to tell you a little story uh, about Paul. A few years ago, I was going through all of my old memorabilia calendars, all of that. And I pulled out a TWA ad and I looked at it and it was a family coming down the stairs, getting off of a plane. And I was about three and I looked at the little boy and it was Paul. Oh my God. And about five. And my feet dropped. We've known each other forever. And um, I called Paul up. I said, Do you, did you remember doing that? Because I didn't remember doing it. And he said, no. And I said, I've got two. I'll send you one. And we were both shocked just shocked. So mm. I didn't work with Paul and after that until years and years later, I was about eight and he was about 10. And we got hired for um, Houseboat. And it really was, it was a wonderful movie to be on. Um, Mel Shavelson, the director, was a doll. He was the nicest, kindest man. Jack Rose and Mel Shavelson were a team. Uh, Rose was the producer and Shavelson was the director. And I had worked with them earlier on I'll See You in My Dreams with Doris Day and Danny Thomas. And uh, they were just great. And it, you know, the, the shoe was like a dream come true. We got to spend a month in um, Washington, D.C. We had our own car and driver. Sugar was our driver, and he would take us out on the weekends, and he would show us 
everything there was to see in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And um, so it was a, it was like a three month shoot. It was long. And uh, we had school, you know, even during the summer, they always gave you, the studio teachers gave you something to do so that you weren't just sitting around. And so, you know, we do little different project. And, you know, I still remember our teacher. I had her quite often. Paul did too. Um, Amelia DeFerris, she was just wonderful, wonderful teacher. She was very exact. <laughs> you had to do exactly this way. So uh, Cary Grant was fun. He could be really funny with us. Um, he kept giving us advice, which I certainly didn't take. And, <laughs> and Cynthia was, was laughing and asking the boys to give her a little pinch on her rear end. What I would say to me, give Sophia a pinch, Mimi, she likes it. And I'd say, no, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Now, speaking of Sophia, let's show, yes, show off this beautiful sparkly thing here. Sophia gave us all medallions, and I still have it. Sophia, if you're watching this, I still have it. My wonderful medallion, it's got a houseboat on the front, and it says, to Mimi from Sophia on the back. And I treasure it. Just uh, love I bet it. you do. Isn't it off? I do. And she was great. She was funny. She was everything good. And Harry Gardino, he was in it. He was fun. Oh, it yeah. Was it was a great shoot to be on. Everybody was nice. Now, you also were a guest star on My Three Sons one time, and I believe Leave It to Beaver. What was that like? Well, you know, both of those shows had nothing but boys, so it was fun. I, I love the boys, so, but I had one Leave it to Beaver where I played a stalker, you know, I pretended I liked Beaver, and I was really trying to get close to, to um, Tony Dow, Wally, and uh, that was my favorite one, that was just hilarious, and everybody yeah, I remember that one, yeah. <laughs> so... Tony Dow yeah. still pretty good looking too. I've seen some pictures of him. He still looks pretty hot. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I always had a crush on Tony Dow, so. And I had a crush on Mrs. Cleaver. Of course, who didn't? <laughs> that's like a mom who vacuums wearing pearls. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that style is still today. There's, there's, I've seen that style still hold the test of time. That's right. Uh, we don't do that anymore. As a matter of fact, I haven't needed to dress up in how many months? I, I put something nice on. It's like, oh, I get to wear something nice. Yeah, put a little <laughs> lipstick on. Oh, look at me. Yeah, it, or, you know, I, we haven't had anybody over in, uh, what, six months? It's just crazy. It yeah. is. It's a crazy times. Now, do you have children, and did they ever express any want to go into the, the world of acting? Yes, I have kids, and nope. Yeah. <laughs> did you kind of put the kibosh on it because they learned from mom that it wasn't all that they thought it was going to be, or they just weren't interested? I didn't talk much. I, it, until I went back into the union on the Young Performance Committee, it was not a part of my life. You know, my life was, you know, having kids and selling real estate. And then when I got my farm, it was having a farm. Hmm. Well, <laughs> now, what do they think, though, when they got older and all of a sudden they're watching something and it's like, wait, that's mom. Oh, well, they'd seen me on and off. They don't think, you know. Okay, so it wasn't like a surprise to them. You, they kind of knew what you had done. It's no, it's no big thing, really. Yeah. It was a thing to them. So do you have a, an idea what like a child actor goes through today? You know, because 
everyone has this picture in her head, you know, the trailer with all the fans and, you know, TVs and, and is that the life they should expect or? Uh, most child actors' careers last four years. And um, we had full young performers committees orientations every month. Uh, kids come, kids go. So for most child actors, probably 90% of them, their career, whatever they do, lasts approximately four years. Mm -hmm. The special ones, and you could question using the word special, uh, are the ones that have a career for longer. And then it's incremental. You know, some become very famous and some work for a while and then they don't do it anymore. Right. So, but for most kid actors, it's uh, four years. So it's well, we are so honored that you came on our show. I am so thrilled to have you here. And we would love to have you come back after the book comes out and talk about it and, and everything. And we would love to hear more about that. Definitely. Well, I've enjoyed doing your show. And thank you for asking me. Well, thank you for coming on and talking about this wonderful organization, A Minor Consideration. I hope we'll put up graphics and things so people know where to go and yeah. find out more about it. And if people want to follow you, do you have a, a, a website? Do you have a Facebook page? Let people know. The Mimi Gibson Facebook page. Yes, I do. All right. So people can go on there and check out what's going on in your life and when the book's coming out and everything. You're not doing that TikTok, are you? Right. You're not doing that TikTok thing, are you? I believe me, to do this is at my max. I I am so techno stupid. Yeah, it, uh, no, I do not do. TikTok. Leave it for the kids. <laughs> do not do TikTok. Yeah, yeah. leave that for those. They've youngsters. got plenty of time on their hands to be TikToking and That's right. Snapchatting all over the place. Us boomers, we don't do that yeah. stuff. Yeah, us boomers have got to stick together. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so, so very much for coming on our show. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. No, and thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it. And we hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Yes, we're looking forward to it. We'll keep, keep in touch with us on that book, please. Yes, we and will definitely ready, get you back on for that. We'll get you back on. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed the show and we will see you later. Goodbye for now. Bye for now. This episode of The Bill and Callie Show is brought to you by Brown Insurance Group has been providing coverage to municipalities, companies, and individuals in the region for over 73 years. As a partner of the Keystone Insurers Group, we are able to offer an extensive line of insurance products and services, from commercial services including employee benefits and liability insurance, to personal services such as home, auto, watercraft, and motorcycle coverage. We are also committed to our community. We support many charities and events in the region. Our core values of care and integrity since the inception of Brown Insurance Group has made us one of Indiana's most respected and valued insurance agencies. To make an appointment with one of our experienced specialists, call our Highland Insurance Office at 219-972-6060. Brown Insurance Group, small town values, big time resources, going beyond expectations to protect you and yours.